This video is brought to you by Privacy. They virtualize your credit cards to help protect your identity. We'll talk more about them later. I see Ethernet ports, or jacks. Uh, what do you call them? I don't know. I see these things everywhere. Businesses, airports, restaurants, my house. Just sitting there, exposed ready for me to attack. Every time I see one, I see a hacking opportunity. Each jack is a port oh, <laughs> to a network that I can take advantage of, especially if we have something like this, a shark jack from Hack5. If I see an exposed ethernet port, all I gotta do is uncap this baby, switch it to attack mode, plug it in, and boom, wait a few moments, and I get a Slack message with all the information about that network. Now first, how cool is that? <laughs> I'm actually giving away two of these in the description, so check that out. But also, how do you protect against that? That is what we're talking about in this video. Yeah, we're gonna talk about attacks and what this looks like when we use it, it's super cool. But I wanna blue team this a bit. Let's talk about security, port security. How to secure your ports. Now, since this is episode 14 of my free CCNA course, a series sponsored by Boson Software. Check out their summer sale if you wanna get serious about getting your CCNA, link below. Anyways, of course we'll be covering how to protect ports on a Cisco switch. Configuring things like, well, port security, which you are required to learn if you wanna get your CCNA. So I'll walk you through that, how to configure it, give you a lab, it's gonna be awesome, it's gonna be fun, but hey, we all might not have Cisco switches in our house. I mean, I have like a billion, but you might have Unify. You might have something else. We'll cover some of those too. Now, disclaimer, this is for educational purposes only. Do not hack anyone for any reason under any circumstances, unless you are a legit ethical hacker, pen tester, and you have permission to do this. But I do give you permission to hack that YouTube algorithm. So hit that like button, notification bell, subscribe, comment. Yeah, hack YouTube today ethically, of course. Now we can't protect our ports unless we first learn a bit more about our attacker. Let's talk about what's happening here in this device, the Shark Jack from Hack5. Hack5 sent me this last year, I think in November, and I'm just now getting a chance to play with it, and it's amazing. There's actually a Linux server running on this, and it's sitting on my keychain, what? We can actually connect to it, so if I put it into uh, arming mode, which is the middle notch here, boop, and then go plug it into my PC. I'm gonna fire up my terminal, command prompt, and SSH into this bad boy. And boom, I'm in. Look at those little sharks, all right. So this is the Linux server running on that USB device. If I do an LS, I've got a couple directories. I can access my loot, which is the stuff I gather from my attacks. Let me show you that real quick. I'll get into that directory. Results from my nmap scan. It's all sitting right there, just in case you don't get that Slack message. And then the payload, your attack. Again, the one we used was nmap. If I uh, look at that script real quick, it's doing a ton of fun stuff. And by the way, this is all customizable. If you can script it, you can do it here. So Nmap is just the beginning. And I do feel like I have to mention this. This tool isn't just for hacking. As an admin, you can use this for, I don't know, testing a jack. Just saying, hey, is this port working? Do we have internet access on this port? Can we ping things? So yeah, it's a legit utility you can use as an admin. So that's pretty cool. That's honestly a big reason why I'm keeping this on my keychain at all times. But when I flip this sucker into arming mode and plug it into a switch, What's happening? What is it doing? So let's walk through what it's doing so we can know how to stop it. So first, let's plug the sucker into a switch port here. Right there. Wait, I gotta make my favorite sound in the world. Hold on. Ah, much better. Okay. The Shark Jack will power on and attempt to get an IP address. And it gets that IP address via DHCP, which if you recall is how our networks dynamically give out IP addresses. Essentially, a host will plug into a network and say, hey, I need an IP address, and you'll have a DHCP server that says, here you go, buddy. The Shark Jack is hoping that that is the case for this network port. And assuming there is a DHCP server, the Shark Jack will get his IP address, which will honestly tell him a ton of stuff about the network. Like, hey, here's how big the network is by giving the subnet mask. You'll also know the gateway or the router's IP address and probably the DNS server. Now, once the Shark Jack has this, and I think it'll actually show you, it'll change the color of the uh, Ethernet Jack or head once it does get an IP address. Armed with that information, it can then script an attack. And in our case, this was an Nmap scan, scanning the network for all available hosts and telling us what ports are available. All things that we could possibly exploit if we were doing something nefarious. So for a hacking device like a Shark Jack, for it to work, a few things have to be be there. For example, the port has to be active or up, not shut down, no shut down. This port must also be on a network that a DHCP server lives on so the Shark Jack can get an IP address. And finally, the Shark Jack has to be able to scan the other host. It has to be able to reach everything else on that network. So knowing that this is what the Shark Jack needs to perform an attack, what do you say we mess that up? What do you say we take away a few of these things by adding some security? Now, one of the first and probably most obvious thing we can do is shut down our stinking ports that we aren't using, right? Right? Yes. Because hey, the Shark Jack does need the sucker to be up. Shut her down. Every port that you're not using, 
shut. Now let's do that on a Cisco switch. I'm gonna show you in Boson's NetSim, which is amazing. It's fantastic for practicing for your CCNA. I'm gonna be demoing their Enhanced Switch Security One Lab and their CCNA pack. Again, check it out, link below. It's like 25% off right now for their summer sale. Code SUMMER21. I'm gonna type in show IP interface brief. Whew, my favorite command. Then I'll do a pipe at the end of that. I'll type include down. What this will do is show me all the interfaces on the switch that are currently down, meaning they're not up, meaning there's nothing plugged into them, and so why should they be up anyway? Let's try it out. So right here on the switch, all these interfaces right here, they may not be up, but they could be. Yeah, they're showing down, down, but that's just because nothing's plugged into them. We wanna make sure that if something does plug into it, it can't come up. So let's do that right now. Simple command, one of the most common you'll see and use in Cisco. We're gonna do comp T or configure terminal to get into our configuration mode. We'll jump into an interface. We'll type in interface and we'll specify our interface. This is gonna be fast ethernet. I'll just type in FA for short, zero, one. Now real quick, I know it's still pretty early in our Cisco CCNA course right now. We haven't covered a lot of interface commands, so this might be really new. That's okay, we'll walk through it. Don't feel like you should know this, you're learning it right now. Now to shut down this interface and make sure it can't come up by itself, one simple command, shut. That's it, shut. And notice what happened here, our log message. Fast Ethernet 01 changed to administratively down. Not just down, I don't have anything plugged into me, down like I can't come up at all, unless the admin says I can. And that's the way we want it, right? I'm gonna type in to get back and I'll do that same command as before. Show IP interface brief. And now look, it looks a bit different, doesn't it? This is what you wanna see to make sure that on your Cisco switch, ports are not gonna come up if something plugs into them. It's administratively down. Now right there, we pretty much already thwarted the shark jack, right? Like he can't make the port come up, it's done. And this applies to pretty much every switch in the world. If you wanna secure the ports on your switch, well then shut down the ones you're not using. Okay, we covered Cisco, what about Unify? I love Unify, that's what I have in my house right now. If I jump into my golden snitch, my primary 48 port switch. We've got quite a few unused ports. If I go to ports, scroll down to one of these guys, let's say unlucky number 13, to make sure he can't be used, which right now he totally could be. He's in my Keith fam network. I'll change the profile to disabled and apply changes. Now, nothing can happen. On other switches, they have similar commands or GUI options, so just shut those suckers down. Now, often, shutting down every available port on your switch is a bit inconvenient. Like, for example, if you're trying to plug in something you want to actually work on, like, the third floor. If you don't have things properly labeled, it might be kind of hard to figure out which port on your switch needs to be turned up. No shut. That's the Cisco command, by the way. So sometimes it does make sense to leave available ports open, but then aren't you still screwed? Aren't you still, like, unprotected? Yes, unless you do a few things. If we wanna keep those ports up, we need to make sure they can't access anything, like our network, our DHCP servers, <laughs> um, our host on the network. To solve that, admins will often put these ports into a black hole network, a network that goes absolutely nowhere. You're, you're just stuck in a hole. This is a network that has nothing. There's no DHCP, there's no default gateway. You're just sitting there on the switch in a hole with no friends and you're sad. We also call this creating a black hole VLAN, which I know we haven't covered VLANs on this course just yet, but for this example, a VLAN is basically a way to create a switch inside of a switch. So we might put these four ports right here and their own network, and they're separate from all these other ports. And we'll call that VLAN 666. <laughs> That's what I've always done in my networks. And VLAN stands for virtual LAN. So we're creating a virtual local area network with these four ports. And like I said, this is a black hole. Nothing going on here. Nothing's happening. You're sad. So let's do that. Let's create a black hole. Back here in Boson NetSim, I'm gonna do a quick command to show what VLANs I have on my current switch. I'll do show VLAN brief. Now this right here is default. When you boot up a Cisco switch and you've done nothing to it, it'll have one VLAN, VLAN one, and all ports are part of that VLAN, meaning the one switch, all the ports are part of the same network. We don't want that right now. No, bad. What I wanna do right now is take ports 10, 11, and 12. I'm gonna isolate them, put them by themselves black hole them. So first I'll create a new VLAN. I'll get in my configuration mode, conf T, and then I'll simply type in VLAN and then my VLAN number 666. VLAN done. I'm gonna hit exit to get out of this VLAN configuration mode. And then I'll configure my interfaces. I'll do interface FA010 and I'll put them in that VLAN. To do that, one command, switch port access VLAN 666, done. And I'll do the same for the other ports. 11, in the black hole. 12, get in that hole. Done. Now if I run that same command as earlier, show VLAN brief, boom, 666, those three ports are locked away in a hole. Devices plugged into these ports cannot talk to any other ports on that switch. It's like they're on their own little separate switch and that switch is connected to nothing. It's just a black hole and they're sad. Now there are some other considerations you wanna have in mind when you're doing this. For example, if these two switches right here, switch one and switch two, were connected with a trunk which we haven't covered yet, we'll cover later. We wanna make sure that VLAN 666 did not go across that trunk. Put them in a black hole, 
and shut them down. Double protection. On Unify, you can do the same kind of thing. If I went to my settings here on my Unify dashboard, went to networks, I could create a stupid network. Add a network, name it black hole. Go to advanced and change the VLAN ID to 666, of course, and turn off all the network features of this particular one. No DHCP server. I'll even take it a step further and do device isolation. So even devices on that same VLAN and that black hole can't talk to each other. We're blindfolding everyone in the hole. And add network. And then I'll go back to my switch and add those ports into the black hole. Put 13 and 666 right now. Black hole. Apply. Now real quick, we're protecting our ports, but what about our debit cards? We gotta protect our financial identity and we can do that with Privacy, the sponsor of this video. Privacy makes it ridiculously easy to buy stuff online while also making sure you're secure. Now it does this in a cool way. It takes your one debit card or your bank account and creates a bunch of virtual debit cards to be used at whatever merchant you wanna to go to. For example, maybe I wanna sign up for Netflix. I can create one debit card, virtual, that's just for Netflix. I can even set a spending limit. Or maybe you only want Netflix for like one month just to watch that one show you wanna watch, but you don't wanna to have to remember to cancel your subscription. Well, just make it a one-time use card. That's it, throw away. And of course, if you wanna go buy some coffee from networkchuck.coffee, man, create a card just for networkchuck.coffee. Set a spending limit like you would want to, I don't know, maybe a thousand, just go for it. But anyways, privacy gives you a ton of control on your interactions with merchants online. Now, privacy is actually free for personal use for up to 12 cards, which is pretty cool. You can also go pro for 10 bucks a month and you can go up to 36 cards and you get 1% cash back on your purchases. And it's really cool for business. If you got teams of people you're dealing with, you can go for the teams plan. You can control what uh, team member has what card and how much they can spend and avoid all the headaches of like, oh, hey, who, who spent all this money? You know exactly what happened. So anyways, you should definitely check out privacy to virtualize your debit cards. That's a cool concept. Uh, so check it out, link below, privacy.com forward slash network chuck. You'll get $5 of cash just to use for signing up anywhere. So $5. So it's more than free. It's $5 for you. It costs negative $5. That's what I mean. <laughs> now, we still have a pretty big problem. Let me explain. There is nothing stopping me from doing this. Sure, all these ports right here are unused, shut down in a black hole. But what if, what if I did this? Hey, I'm going to unplug that guy and plug in my guy. <laughs> Easy enough, right? So how do you stop hackers from unplugging your existing devices and just plugging theirs in for a moment to steal information? Port security, and it's freaking awesome. Let's try it out. So here's our scenario. With port security, we want to make sure that only the devices we want to be plugged into our switch are plugged into our switch. So when our attacker does decide to unplug our Raspberry Pi, boop, and plug himself in, nothing happens. Let's do that with port security right now. To understand port security and appreciate what it's doing, we have to understand what's happening when we plug in our device to a port. Now we've already talked about this in our series so far. It has everything to do with layer two addresses or MAC addresses. For example, our Raspberry Pi here has this MAC address right here. When we plug our Raspberry Pi into the switch, into that switch port, the switch will take his MAC address and go, oh, that's who this Raspberry Pi is. I'm gonna add that to my MAC address table. Now with port security, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna tell that switch port that only a device with the MAC address of this one right here, ending in E3D9, only that MAC address can actually be alive and up on that switch port. If any other device with a different MAC address comes onto that switch port, shut that sucker down, get him away, don't let him come on. <laughs> That's security, right? He's a bit like our bouncer, he's gonna bounce him out. This guy is the only guy on the list. So let's say our Shark Jack had this MAC address, if he did try to connect in, boop, unplug our Raspberry Pi and his MAC address showed up, nope, bounced. That's not the right MAC address, Shark Jack. You're out of here, dude. So let's configure that right now. It's actually pretty cool. Now, configuring port security does have a few steps. I encourage you to go check out Boson's lab here, NetSim. They have two labs, security one, security two, and then one called troubleshooting port security. It's awesome, so go check that out. But real quick, I do wanna try this on my actual switch so I can show you plugging in my Shark Jack and what happens when I actually have security enabled. Let's try it out. First, I'll SSH or log into my switch over here. SSH, network chuck at his IP address. I'm in, I'll get into enable mode, boom. The port I wanna mess with, let me see. It's gonna be port 39 on my switch. Let's go take a look at it. Show run, and I can specify my interface. Interface, GI, and that's gonna be 4039. So this is his current running configuration, nothing crazy. He's just in a certain VLAN that's on my home network and he has access to all he needs. Now let's configure port security. So I'll get into configuration mode, conf T. I'll jump into my interface configuration mode by doing interface GI4039. Now first I need to specify his mode, kind of hard code it. I'm gonna use the command switch port 
mode access. Essentially, each port on the Cisco switch could be an access port or a trunk port. We want to make sure they're hard coded to be an access port. What does all that mean? We'll talk more about that later in the series. But let's hard code that right now. Bam. Then one simple command to enable port security. Switch port, port dash security. Bam. Now it's enabled, but not configured. There are a few things we want to do and add here real quick. The next thing we want to configure is how many MAC addresses we want allowed on this port. So the command will be switch port, port security, maximum, and then the number of MAC addresses you want. Now by default, it's going to be one, which is perfect for my case. Now, sometimes you might want to put two. Why two? Because often you might have a Cisco phone or an IP phone sitting on someone's desk and that's plugged directly into the wall. Then your computer might be plugged into your phone. Now how that works is obviously magic. <laughs> we'll talk more about that later in this course. But on that one switch port, you'll have two Mac addresses, one for the phone and one for the computer. So just keep that in mind if you have that situation. But for me, it's only one host. So I could leave it as is or specify one. I'll do that right now. Boom. One MAC address allowed, no others. Now we have to tell the switch that we only want the MAC address of my Raspberry Pi to be allowed, and that's it. Here's how we do that. Switch port, port security. Then we'll say MAC dash address, and then we'll say the value. Now we have a few options actually. If I hit question mark, it'll show me my options here. First, we can obviously just put in the MAC address of my Raspberry Pi and be done with it. That's it. You could also say, you know what? This MAC address is not allowed. Maybe we we'll learn the MAC address of the Hack Shark, no, Shark Jack, I forgot his name for a bit. We can learn his MAC address and say, you know what? I'm gonna explicitly deny him by putting the forbidden command. Or, this is my favorite way of doing it, we have the sticky command. Things get a little sticky. <laughs> and what'll happen is you don't have to hard code the MAC address of your Raspberry Pi when you plug it into your switch or any other device you might plug in. What it will do is you plug in your device, your switch will learn that MAC address and then stick it like a post-it <laughs> and say, okay, that's the only MAC address allowed, that's it. And that's normally the one I go with because I'm too lazy to go find all the MAC addresses and hard code them. So I'll just say, you know what, whatever gets plugged in first is the only one allowed. So sticky, boom. And the last but certainly not least, let's decide what we're gonna do to people who violate our rules here. The command will be switch port, port security violation. What are we gonna do to you? Let's hit question mark and see what our options are. Now by default, and this is probably my favorite one, it's shut down. If something happens, shut that sucker down. This will shut the port down, send an SNMP message saying, hey, it got shut down because of this reason. Again, default behavior. Restrict will actually keep the port up if it violates, but it will restrict traffic on that interface. Dropping packets, frames, and it will send an SNMP message saying, hey, Something happened here, this is why. We'll cover what SNMP means later in this course. Don't worry about that. And then protect does the same kind of thing as restrict, but no SNMP message. So it will keep the port up, restrict traffic, but no message. Now again, I like the shutdown scenario. It's default, we don't have to configure it, but I'm gonna do it anyway. So violation, shut down. Boom. So now, how do we know it's working? How do we verify things? I'm gonna show commands here real quick. First one, show port security. Just like that. It shows us the port that we have port security configured on. Configuration of only one MAC address allowed. There's currently only one address. Cool, no violations. And if it does violate, we're gonna shut that sucker down. We can also see the addresses learned from the sticky command. If we type in address just after that command, boom. We can see that's the IP address of my, or I'm sorry, the MAC address of my Raspberry Pi. And it was learned via a secure sticky. It's just a funny phrase, I don't know why. So what do you say we simulate a hacking scenario? Hold on, let's become a hacker for a second. <laughs> <laughs> and do this. So, can't wear that all the time. I'm gonna try and get some information here. There we go. I'll give it a second to come up. I think it's been enough time. I wanna do show port security. Nothing yet. Oh, <laughs> look at this. Okay, okay, cool. So currently there's one MAC address on there, but it's not the right one, sucker. Security violation, shut down. I'm gonna do show port security and I can specify, let me see, the interface. I'll do interface GI4039 and get some more info on that. There we go, security enabled. Current port status, it's secure, shut down. That hacker has been thwarted. He's not getting a thing from us. Woo! I'm gonna pull my Raspberry Pi back in. Now one thing you'll notice is that it doesn't come back up. How do you fix that <laughs> once the violation's happened? And also if I do show IP interface brief and I only wanna see my one port there. I'll include GI4039. Oh wait, just 4039, sorry. Yeah, it is down, down. You can also do show interfaces GI4039 and status right after that. And look at that, cool. It puts it in an error disabled state. Error disabled. Different from an admin shutdown. Similar result, but different. We didn't shut this down as an admin. The switch shut it down because of a port security violation and you'll see stuff like this in the status. Error disabled. Now to fix that, it's pretty simple. We're just gonna jump into the interface. 
Conf T, interface GI4039. We'll do a shut to administratively shut it down and then no shut to bring it back up. And if I do a show interface GI4039 status, bam, status connected. No, I wanna see show port security interface GI4039. And cool, we know things are groovy, are good, are golden when it shows secure up, not secure down. Now, how do we do this on other switches that aren't Cisco? Unify has a similar feature, but it's not gonna be sticky. For example, here on port 13 on my switch back in the Unify portal, I can do a Mac ID filter allow list and control what Mac addresses are allowed to connect to that switch. So kind of hard coding it like we could with the Cisco switch. I don't believe there is a sticky option. So correct me if I'm wrong, if you're a Unify guru, let me know in the comments below. Um, but this is, this is one way to do it. So. The Shark Jack and devices like that are out there in the wild. Whether your company's being audited by a pen tester and they're testing all the open ports, or if there's a legit hacker just walking around trying to insert things into your ports and hack you, you need to protect yourself. What we cover here in this video are some best practices, some baseline things to make sure you don't get hacked by exposing your exposed ports. The best thing to do for ports that are just not being used is to put them in a black hole and shut them down. And for every other port that is being used by a legit device, you have to make sure a hacker can't just unplug your device and plug his device in. So with that, we're gonna use something like port security. Now I do wanna mention this, with automation and all kinds of cool stuff coming out in networking, there are better ways to do this. You might work at a company where they have this. They might use things like 802.1x, which is a port security feature that will require you to actually log in with credentials to gain access to that port. So legit, you plug in your computer, a login screen will come up and you gotta log in and then boom, you're authorized to use that switch. You can also go a step further by using certificates where you don't have to log in, but your device has to have a certain certificate to be able to use that switch port. A lot of enterprise companies do this. And then they'll have more advanced features like Cisco ICE, which is kind of automation for security. It'll intelligently profile devices that plug into the switch and figure out if they're good or bad based on all kinds of stuff. And that was episode 14 of my free Cisco CCNA course. Now, I know. I kind of jumped the shark, <laughs> jumped the shark a bit by going forward in the exam objectives and going to port security. I did that because I just couldn't help it. I wanted to jump to it because I thought it was cool. I had this device I wanted to play with. So I jumped the shark. Now I did this also because I know that there wasn't too much information that you didn't already have. So hopefully it wasn't too much. Let me know below. Going forward, we will continue with the exam objectives in order. And again, shout out to Privacy, the sponsor of this video. If you want to create virtual cards and do all kinds of cool stuff to control your financial identity online, check them out. <laughs> Link below privacy.com forward slash network chuck and you get $5 just for trying it. It costs you negative $5. And Boson, who sponsors this entire series. Again, they're doing a summer sale right now. The code I think is summer21. Just use my link below and you get 25% off most of the products. I've personally used Boson. Their exams and their, their lab software for my CCMP. They're fantastic. The gold standard for getting your CCNA. So if you want to get serious about that and get your CCNA this year, check it out. Now's the time. So go ahead and do that. And oh yeah, I almost forgot. I'm giving away two of these Shark Jacks. If you want to enter to win that contest, link below. And um, I, I, there's a lot of stuff I have to add at the end of this video. There's so much stuff I have to talk about. I'm also got a lab you can go through for poor security. To pack a tracer lab, go check it out, link below. And yeah, I think I, I think I said everything, right? <laughs> Don't forget to hack the YouTube algorithm, like this video, comment, subscribe, notification bell, all that YouTube stuff. You gotta hack YouTube today, ethically, easy for me to say, ethically, of course. And for real, I'm gonna let you guys go. That's all I have. I'll catch you guys in the next episode. Let me know what you think of the series so far. I'm gonna keep working on it. It's gonna be fun. I'll catch you guys next time.